Ron John, I wonder if you think that there's any industries that might be safe from this crackdown. We don't talk about that a lot, but we know that semiconductors and building up capacity innovation there has been a long-term priority for Beijing. Could there be some opportunities here? Yep. Thanks for having me here, Deidre. And <clears throat> I do think hard tech versus soft tech is a very important distinction here because in the last week, I mean, the last week and month, China has gone after food delivery, as you said. Uh, Tencent just yesterday announced that they will not be allowed to sign up new users on their WeChat platform due to a data privacy situation. Well, this is the biggest messaging app in the world. These are all consumer-facing apps that essentially provide some value in your leisure time, help provide some service in your daily life. There's a really good piece by Noah Smith who was looking at the fact that all of these actions under the guise of antitrust might be actually reshaping the Chinese economy and pushing investment, pushing talent and capital towards hard tech, semiconductors, biotechnology, core artificial intelligence. And as you can see, Huawei, companies like this have not been hit yet, have not. They are just as friendly with the government as they have ever been before. So I think for American investors, it's really important to, one, make that distinction between hard tech and soft tech and where are you going to put your money, and for American policymakers to realize this is a critical moment where China, who has already telegraphed these movements out from 2018, 2020, and five-year plans and the 2025 vision, has said these are the industries we want to own. It could be happening right now. Well, Huawei hasn't been hit by Beijing, but it has been hit uh, by U.S. sanctions. So perhaps Beijing trying to protect it a little bit, not adding on more insult to injury. But there's also all those um, speculation about connections to the Chinese government. We know that doesn't make a company safe, however. Uh, Ranjan, I wonder if you think or how much you think about contagion, right? As we see the sell-off in Chinese names, that it's affecting a lot of different emerging markets funds as well. At what point do you think that we see Western investors, perhaps in Europe and the U.S., sell winning positions to make up for what they're losing in these Chinese names? Yeah, I think it's really important to remember that when we're thinking about what are the second-order effects and potential contagion around investment, it, there's so much interconnectedness here, and China has been kind of the focal point of the SoftBank Tiger Global Growth Investing Strategy, and that model where you find a unicorn anywhere in the world, and then you shovel in a bunch of cash. And then it's been a winning model for the last four years, but this is the first real hiccup in that model. And I do wonder, there's already talk that, you know, now that these investors will shift more towards India and they will potentially be the beneficiary, their unicorns. But this, these, this is a reminder that these markets are still emerging in the sense, even if the economy in an aggregate level is hitting uh, you know, huge amounts that are becoming equivalent to the US, the rule of law, how foreign investors are treated, these things are still very emerging in that sense that emerging markets investors always had to worry about for the last 20, 30 years. And, and I do think also that that growth model could change. Now this is the first real dent in the way that SoftBank vision of take huge bets on big tech growth. This is a reminder that that's not always going to win, even though it's been winning for the last five years. Right. Ranjan, as we're talking, there is a, a flash head, just, just a flash head that uh, China-based Hello is withdrawing a plan for a U.S. public offering. I guess that, at this point, shouldn't come as a surprise. Yep. I mean, the Ch Chinese companies listing the Didi Chuxing situation in early July, it was the tell. So the Wall Street Journal reported after the initial IPO that behind the scenes, the Chinese government was essentially pressuring them to not list in the United States. And they did it anyways. They directly went against the Chinese government. And remember, most of these companies that have been listing here have been through variable interest entities, VIEs, which are essentially shell companies in the Cayman Islands that, you know, like ostensibly have a link to the original Chinese company, but it's effectively financial engineering. And it depends on the Chinese government allowing these arrangements to take place, even though they were never explicitly blessed by the government. So it's a risky endeavor. And uh, more companies listening here, I mean, I think is a big uncertainty.